Hey, today's my birthday. This is a video I've been wanting to make a while, but had some reservations about it. After all, the support from you guys has been incredible. It's changed my life. So it seemed a little audacious to ask for anything else. However, I'm reminded of the song Satan by Orbital. Well, son, a funny thing about regret is that it's better to regret something you have done than to regret something you haven't done. That's my approach to a lot of things in life. I mean, up to a point. I mean, if what you want to do carries an obvious prison term if you're caught, then yeah, maybe don't do that. So this is a birthday request list. No, wait, wait. Nothing on this list needs to cost any money, and you might enjoy some of this stuff too. I mean, maybe not, but whatever. It's my birthday. Let's go. Now, everything on this list involves you being able to contact me. So here's a quick chart on how to do that. You can email me, post in forum threads I set up in the description of this video, or post in YouTube comments. Now these first two options, I'll definitely see what you write. YouTube comments, good luck. Now this isn't a ploy to get people to register on my forums. I don't care if you do or not. It's just an easy way for me to have a record of this stuff that everybody can see. Also, since I'm asking the entire internet for lots of input, I may not be able to respond to everyone. So thanks in advance if you do help out with this stuff. Okay, birthday time. Uh, oh. Okay, first up. I'm generally not the biggest fan of MMORPGs, but I love the stories that come out of them. There are things that happen in MMOs that just don't happen in other kinds of games. I've always wanted to hear all the cool things I'm missing by not playing these. So if you're a World of Warcraft addict, or spend all day playing EVE Online, or maybe you have a friend who just won't shut up about the MMO they're always playing, I want to hear all the best MMO stories. Now to clarify, I'm not looking for just any MMO story. In fact, there was an article not long ago on the best World of Warcraft stories, and I thought most of these were pretty weak. I don't want to hear stories about how you almost got attacked by a mob, but then some strangers saved you and now you're best friends or you got really lucky or did something clever in a battle. No, no, no. I want stories that make humanity look insane. I want to hear things like what obsessive compulsive people can accomplish when they have some sort of vendetta. Guild power struggles. Political drama. People who just take the game way, way too seriously. Breaking the game because you're doing something the developers never accounted for and it's scaring them. Huge betrayals, screw-ups on a spectacular scale. I want to hear what all the determined and motivated psychos are doing. So here are some examples of stories I do know about to let you know what I mean. Let's start with World of Warcraft, the biggest MMO out there. Kazakh does Stormwind. What happened here was this giant demon boss was lured halfway across the continent into the capital city and let loose. And as a friend of mine explained it, you really need to kill this guy within the first couple minutes, otherwise he becomes practically invincible. This is first class chaos. Serenity Now Funeral Crash. Players announced they were holding an in-game funeral for an actual WoW player, and holding it in a public PvP area maybe wasn't the brightest idea. So one group showed up and completely crashed it. It was a total slaughter that caused resentment that probably lingers to this day. Onyxia White. This is an audio clip that is just a really hilarious account of a guild leader trying to orchestrate a raid that doesn't go well at all. At 40% you will stop dots, until then you will throw more dots, throw more dots, more dots, more dots. Come on, more dots. The guy running this does not take it well. 50 DKP minus! On Kira Ransom. When a new zone opened up in the game, there was an incredibly elaborate process to get it open. One guild did everything to open it up, they held it ransom until they could shake down all the other players for gold or whatever. Corrupted Blood Disease This was a disease meant for high level raids that players managed to smuggle out of the zone and unleash upon the general populace. It spread just like a real disease, caused bodies in the streets, people would flee the cities, awesome. And I'm assuming everybody knows the Leroy Jenkins video. If you don't, look it up. 
Okay, I mostly know World of Warcraft stories, but here's a few other ones. EVE Online. The most famous incident I know of is a scammer who ran an actual Ponzi scheme inside the game, then cashed out with one trillion currency, bought the best ships in the game. Bet he pissed off some people. Also, I'm blurry on details, but I've heard of multiple cases where people will spend months infiltrating corporations only to gloriously betray them down the line. Also, it seems like every few months there will be some utterly gigantic war that's triggered over something completely stupid. Keep them coming. Cloud Song Robbery In Dark Age of Camelot, this one guy got robbed by a group from his valuable Cloud Song artifact. He was not happy about it. But this was back in 2008. He's probably moved on to Call of Duty by now. And finally, I have one more from Final Fantasy XI. The Pandemonium Warden is a tough boss that this guild decided to buckle down and take out. Well, they tried, but 18 hours of continuous combat later, they called it quits because he was just too tough. A boss that takes a coordinated group over 18 hours to kill. Good job, devs. That'll keep them busy. So that should get you started. I'm sure I haven't even scratched the surface of the best stories out there, so I want to hear them. This could be something you've personally experienced or just know a lot about. You can give me all the details, and if I need some context to understand it, that's fine too. I hope to still be reading these next year. If you or someone you know have dumped thousands of hours into a game, let's hear what you have to show for it. Okay, it's no secret I'm a soundtrack maniac, but I have a problem. Right now, there are so many games out or coming out, it's getting stupefying. I think Steam alone has over 7,000 games at this point in time. In fact, I saw a comic on this. This reflects my own thoughts on the gaming industry exactly. Now that's okay, I can deal with that. I'll just get pickier and pickier and maybe when I'm old and can retire, I'll play games for 10 years straight and try to catch up. That's why I get so pissed when companies kill games. They're trying to ruin everything. But my problem is a lot of games I'll be skipping or don't even know about may have great music and I want in on that. In Mortal Kombat, Shang Tsung is a sorcerer who steals the souls of all the opponents he defeats and just keeps collecting them. Well, I want to be like that, except with music. So there are thousands of games out there I'll never play. But if they're good enough, I want their souls. I, I mean, music. Now, I don't want every last soundtrack out there. I only want the good music. So what's good? Well, I'm leaving that up to you. I listen to a wide variety of soundtracks, and generally if a lot of people like one, I do too. Now these are soundtracks I'm talking about. You know, music without words. Once people open their mouths and sing, I start to get a lot pickier about what I'm listening to. So play it safe and just send me the music. So what I want is all the good music you can find from games I might be missing. Here's some examples of games I'm less likely to play. Now if a game has tens of millions of dollars in marketing, or frequently makes top 100 lists of something, I'm probably aware of its existence. Although even those games, sometimes they have an official soundtrack, but there'll be music that's not on the soundtrack. That's all fine too. Now just to be clear, I'm not trying to rip off any composers. This is not a plea to go pirate everything. But if it's a game that doesn't have a soundtrack for sale, I think it's fair to copy and spread that around, especially lesser known stuff. Nobody's losing money if I listen to a soundtrack from a game I'm not going to play and doesn't have a soundtrack for sale. On that note, don't taunt me either. Don't tell me about a game that has great music but nobody's extracted it or it's impossible to find. As an example, Quake 2 has some awesome music for the intro movie. I read Rob Zombie composed part of it. No idea if that's true or not. But it's in crappy quality and mixed in with all the vocals and sound effects. You may as well not even listen to it. So if you do send me anything, please send me a clear source. I'm not an audiophile exactly, so it doesn't have to be lossless or anything, but I do appreciate high quality. I also try to avoid YouTube as a source of music since there's all kinds of recompression and processing that goes with that. The closer to the source, the better. And I am aware of Galbadia Hotel. 
one of the biggest archives of game soundtracks out there. But there's not much in the way of quality control there. I've listened to game riffs where the person didn't know what they were doing and the music had pops added to it, or sounded like it was recorded through a telephone, so I guess maybe check it yourself first. And this isn't limited to just game soundtracks, movie ones are fine too. I tend to prefer game soundtracks since they're a little more diverse, plus movie ones can change the tone and pace every 30 seconds, but hey, good music is good music. I even saw a mouse commercial that had great music to it. So just any good soundtrack. Again, please don't send me crap. If it's a game that only has one good track on it, well then I only want that one track. Or maybe you have a hookup. I have a copy of the score to The Man With One Red Shoe. That was never even for sale. The guy who sent it to me must have been a wizard or something. So that's my second request. Send me all the good, lesser known soundtracks you know of. A lot of games out there are crap, and they're gonna have crap music, but there have to be some gems sprinkled around there. Help me find them. Don't let this be me! I like art. Sometimes when I see a picture I like, I wish I could transpose my brain inside it and experience it more completely. I can't do that, but I still like art. So what kind of art do I like? Well, the stuff I'd like to see more of are mostly exotic landscape environments. I like stuff that looks painted. A lot of games have great concept art. Some themes I like are verdant forest, or take a normal nature shot and throw some sci-fi device in there. Yeah. I like stuff that looks like it could be some sort of planetary outpost. I also like overgrown post-apocalyptic areas where nature's trying to reclaim them. And I'm convinced almost anything looks good in evening light. So if you have some real scenic art like this, lay it on me. Especially high resolution stuff. If I ever get to stop living like a nomad, I want to print it all out and hang a bunch of it up. So yeah, just more art like this stuff. All right, now I don't expect this one, but I may as well ask. I have never used a mouse I completely like. That's because I'm a freak and apparently use my mouse differently than everyone else. The thing is, I use every finger on my hand. I like having a button for each one, sometimes more. But about 90% of mice act like these two fingers don't exist. So even though I'm right-handed, I typically buy ambidextrous mice since those actually give me enough buttons. But even then, they're not designed for freaks like me. There's always something wrong, like a hump in the back or odd button placement. Nowadays, people are doing lots of things with 3D printing, and I was thinking maybe somebody could make a custom mouse. Now, I'm not talking about a custom sensor or software. There's plenty of good mice for that, but maybe a custom shell for an existing one. Somebody's done this already, but that's only for a three button mouse. I want at least five, preferably more. A while back, I tried a peripheral called the Claw, which was a keypad replacement, and it had this really ergonomic shape to it. It had a learning curve, but this thing was actually super nice to use. It broke after two weeks, so that sucked. But the idea of a mouse really fitting your hand with a lot of functionality sounds great to me. There's certainly room for improvement to what's on the market now. This is probably the most comfortable ambidextrous mouse I've used, but it has too low a DPI and the button placement could be a little better. If anyone out there is a design engineer and wants to make a 3D printed mouse shell, I'd love to have a better mouse. I'll reimburse you for the materials and shipping, though check with me first. Don't just print it up and say, hey Ross, I made your mouse, where's my money? If you want, you could even patent the design and sell it. I don't care, I just want a better mouse. Okay, we're getting to the real long shot presents now. I am not expecting these, but maybe we'll have it someday. This is software I'd like to see. The first one is integer or nearest neighbor scaling for non-native resolutions on a display. What the hell does that mean? Okay, the simple version is your screen displays at a native resolution. For a lot of you, that's 1080p. Doesn't matter. The point is everything you see is sharp and lines up with the pixels when your computer displays at that resolution. But say you have an old game that only runs at a low resolution. Well, what either your video card or your monitor does is scale that up, usually using bilinear filtering. 
Now for things like movies and photos, this looks pretty good. But for pixel graphics, all this does is blur things. This always happens on low resolution stuff. So even if you have a display where the numbers divide perfectly, it's still going to be blurry. So what nearest neighbor filtering does is keep those pixels sharp. And unlike bilinear filtering, the larger your resolution, the closer to the original image it will look like. I'm kind of amazed we don't have this already because we have 4K monitors on the market now and they would scale perfectly to 1080 if you needed a lower resolution. Neither Nvidia nor AMD have this. Nvidia users I know have been asking for this for years, but nobody cares except me and these 20 people here. As resolutions get higher, this is going to be necessary for old games to look good. This is only going to get worse. Right now, 8K displays exist. That will blur the hell out of anything low resolution. Now the program's DOSBox and GDOSSEDO can do this, but that only applies to certain programs. There's lots of situations where there's no solution. This shouldn't even be that hard, because video card manufacturers already have display scaling. It would not surprise me if this only involves two lines of code. But, since we don't have access to that, we have to figure out a workaround. I really hope this part of the video becomes obsolete. But hey, it shows how we're still waiting for a feature we should have had 10 years ago. And the final gift I want almost certainly won't happen. But I like to play old games, and I feel like the future of that on the PC is going to be through emulation. VMware, VirtualBox, stuff like that. Can we get some anti-aliasing support with this stuff? We've been able to force anti-aliasing on games for a long time now, but there's no support for that at all in PC emulation. I know this stuff is super complicated, but I still find it ridiculous when a computer 10 times as powerful can't run a game as well as an old one. So that's what I want for my birthday really specific, kind of geeky stuff. But hey, now I can rest better knowing I have a new regret than wondering if I should have made this or not. And hey, if you find this video long after the fact, most of this stuff is still applicable. My personality and interests don't change that much from year to year. Although I have heard that you completely regenerate all the cells in your body every seven years. So technically you become a different person, but Hmm, I wouldn't mind one of those either.